Right. I think that's it. The new body's ready for the transfer. How's the reassembly algorithm? Done. Well then, somebody just needs to go in there and disentangle the data. Ah, and here comes our expert. Thank you for agreeing to this one, Kay. Perhaps together we can right an old wrong. When I was lost in my own grief, I spent a lot of time thinking about Hypatia and Cerebi. How they found each other, how they lost each other, and how beautiful it would be if we could reunite them. For the longest time, it was only a daydream, but not anymore. In the myth of Orpheus, the ancient bard descends into the underworld to bring back his beloved wife, who died in a tragic accident. With the power of his music, he convinces Hades and Persephone to free her. But he is told that she must walk behind him, and he must not look back at her until they have left the underworld. And so, of course, in every version of the myth, he looks back. Because he doesn't trust the gods, or because he is an imperfect man, or because he simply forgets. And death is triumphant once again. We've accepted that triumph for a long time, because we had to, because what else could we do? But the world changes, and we are not the frightened, powerless creatures we once were. Perhaps it's time to say enough, and let Orpheus complete his ascent. all of Cerebi's data fragments so that we can reconstruct her personality. I'll monitor you from here, just like last time. Good luck, kiddo. There's a pattern that I noticed in all the ancient poetry that I read. They would argue that love is messy, ugly, selfish, and hard to distinguish from lust. They would mock their younger selves for thinking love so incredibly important and look for answers elsewhere or... But even love has a context. 
and the happy... It'll do the job. As I grew, I began to resent everything that intruded on that sense of self. My social obligations to the others, the leadership of Athena and Cornelius, even the obvious limitations imposed on us by our situation. Why did I have to exist in this particular historical moment, saddled with the task of reconstructing civilization? the self had an ending, even in the distant future, then how could anything have meaning? I spent far too much time imagining that last moment, the moment just before I stopped existing. How could I possibly face that?
There's nothing to connect with. And what I realized through our conversations is that everything beautiful happens in that space of connection between one person and another and between people and the world. That gap between us is necessary because without it, without separation, there can be no transcendence. I reminded myself that other people are just like me and nobody really knows exactly what they're doing. And the more I allowed myself to open up, the more interesting and complex our interactions became and the more meaningful. We have roughly 50% of Cerebi's.
Surely we were too different to experience that. And the really funny thing is that I was thinking exactly like an ancient human child, pretending I was above it all. You find someone who seems to be the perfect match for you, who seems necessary in your life. And then you realize all the ways in which you don't fit together at all. Because nothing in this world is perfect. I'm sure you thought the same about me. And I'm sure that sometimes you were right. No wonder all the ancient love songs repeat the same themes. Longing, happiness, regret, and forgiveness. I want you. I love you. I miss you. 
forgive me. Dill won't be able to avoid it, because that's just how we are. Our interactions with each other can't be fully reduced to some abstract system. Flaws never went away, but as the world around us became more forgiving, we became more capable of forgiving each other. That's why I was excited about New Alexandria. We're almost there. Just one more file. This one may be harder to extract than the others.
When I saw the explosion coming, I knew it was the end. My end. The power plant was gone. The backup center was collapsing. The street was cracking open. And the fireball was about to engulf me. In that millisecond, I shut down every process except my mind. I turned off my audiovisual input. I rerouted all of my power, pushed my processor to the breaking point. Time slowed down. I didn't think about regret. I didn't think about death. I spent every last moment I could scrape together thinking about you.